G'day all, welcome to my live stream. Right, so this is my map I've got here today. So we're going to show off. So a bit of a story from what happened last video. What I did last time was I had an error come up. I spent a probably good four to five hours trying to fix it. So I asked a few people, did a lot of Googling and researching it couldn't solve the map and instead of spending more time on it I just went now nah, start again so I started a new map this time I've had no errors checked heaps of times going back so I restarted all and then I got into placing some trees so this is pretty much just random placing trees bringing them all in out of the Giants file and then setting up um, some fences so I've done all this so I've actually just learnt a lot of just placings I've also placed a few farm equipment around in the house and all that just to get a feel of how it is. So when I got into the game, I just made sure there was enough room to drive the big machines through the um, houses and all that sort of stuff. Um, all I like to say is thanks for everyone for coming and having a look. And now on to today's effort. What I want to do is place some more fences down. So what I've learnt to do in the last you know couple of days now is placing fences very, very easily. So what I've done here is recently just place yeah, there we go. Place this fence in through here just to practice it. So what I've worked out is how to make it nice and straight. Is I went on to FSUK on Winkley's rule info here. So this I'll add it into the description. I should do that right now. Copy that and add it onto my description. I'll write it here. A link to God. I don't forget. There you go. Uh, we add that on. So this is the guide on everything. So following that, I've got these scripts here. So what I've done is place it in. So with the scripts, I have my new spine script. So you go placement create, which adds these two. Um, well, they got transform groups in. And then what that does is you can now with the spline placement or the spline which brings it so objects to place so which i'm using this one so put them object to place and also create a new spline bring that into the spine placement file uh, transform group so that's in there so now we can make fence so i'll start by just control b bringing it to this one here so there are lots of other ways of how to use spines and everything. Most people around here sort of know it. You click on Control B, but you click on the E or the S, and you push R to flip it to your start and your end. So and do that. What I've worked out to do is you can use your arrows to move it. I like to get rid of that first one. Follow on this. Bring that in line with my post here. Yeah, might bring it out a little bit and just bring one more bay out. So for the second, I'll just copy this. So the trick I've learnt with these ones is just going Control D, which duplicates it, and grabbing the blue line and dragging out. And judging by that, that's too far. Oh, we'll have a little error. We we'll solve that later. So back to my spline. So clicking the. Yes, Control B. And I could place that anywhere. I just worked out to bring it up a bit. Go to the next one, the end. Go to wherever the I want it to stop. Which, well, at the moment is just going to be right here. So we go Control B to here. So that's where I'm going to place that. So I like to bring it up so I can see above all the scrub, the trees, everything like that make sure it's nice and straight I've worked out that you don't need it running on the ground Every, all the other points you put in it can make it crooked so you can not keep it straight so having it just two points to start and the finish with this spline is I find a lot a lot easier to get it nice and straight so it's a fence line you want it pretty straight so especially if someone looks down it so I'll look that along there it's pretty good we could bring it back in a bit, so if I go back to the other end, and push my arrow, swap it over. Too far.
Yeah, you gotta get it. Pretty good. I, I'm happy with that. So that's pretty close. Okay, so from here on, what I do is now I go into my uh, script editor. Yeah, ignore that. I bring up the execute one. And so what I want to make sure is objects to be placed. I'm using this post here. It it doesn't really matter where you because all I do is no object at the start. I just change it to true. Lowercase does matter here. I've worked out the distance of it. So what I, which one I am using is I'm using one out of the prefabs. I'm using a which fence are we using? The basically there's only one at the moment because there's not many prefabs available. Here we go by RW modding. This is a very good yarn. There's lots of added into it. I'm just using the two post one, so it's only one post and a bit of wire. So it's not that far. So I've worked out that to be 4.28 is the size there. I'm pretty sure. I'll just double check. I got a little screenshot of how I had it before. Oh, 4.18, there we go. There are my numbers. So I set that at 4.18. That works out exactly between the post and the wire. Get rid of this 90, put it zero, because we want all the faces the same. That set to true. I've spelt that wrong, so it's not blue, it's not come up. Uh, T-R-U-E, there we go. So it's all blue, that's all good. Execute, don't worry about saving, because it doesn't make a difference on it. And oh, you've got to have the spine placement selected. There we go, that's why it didn't work. Bang, place it down. As you can tell, I've in here it says it places an object on the ground. So you set distance away from spine. Yeah, align objects with the terrain. Just make sure that one's true. So then if your spine's off the ground, it automatically lowers the fences to the ground. So see how the fences are following the terrain level now? Nice and straight, because I've only got the two ends. And that's how we get this fence put on. So it's quite simple. And because now all the posts are in, so there's all the ones I've done so far. I'll just bring that up. All the posts are now in the place objects. So all you do is collect them. Um, you can cut them by control X and paste them control V, but I've worked out to hold the middle mouse button and then just drag it over the next transform group, moves it over there. It's the easier shortcut I've found. Because of the way this is, so when I'm selecting it, instead of just, ma I make sure going in the scene graph and making sure I've got the whole transform group, that's the best way to work it out. Then we got that a little bit off, but Z, but if we duplicate that, control D, I can bring that to here. Probably should have duplicated the other one. But you get that. And it's pretty much straight up. So get that in there. With this one, it's pretty easy. So the way the wire is, is at the moment it's not right. We can just get rid of the wire panel. Could do that or we could just leave it as is being most people won't see that bit so that now you've all seen it that's the joys of not making it correct from now on if i set the next one right on this post here we can go that way pretty easy so i'll put, make sure i've got the post selected spin it around together Oh, that's one fence done. Uh, back to my spline. So I've pushed the other one. Now we can go start. I've actually should probably put start right here. And go all this way because this is where the fence ends in real life. So, so far, all I did was just place all these trees randomly. I learned how to just, before learning anything, bring it up so I can see it, make sure it's not interfering with anything. You don't want the trees in the way or anything like that. You don't want it to be you know, logging out or anything because it would look pretty strange if everything was logged out. Yeah, well, not logged like. You don't want a fence to go through the middle of a tree. You don't want any collision points or anything like that happening. So that's why I like to be able to just bring the fence up. 
I'll bring the spline up and then I can have a look at it and see where it's hitting on. And come down on the fence here, make sure it's nice and straight. Move it. Looks pretty good. Maybe I can I'm bring the start one to here. That looks straight from here. I go from there, that'll be all right. We probably could make this one one more, so we'll just duplicate that, control D, drag it out again till it's just touching like so. And there we go, nice and easy placing fences. So now I've got the spline there again, everything like so. I was pretty happy with it, the gaps or anything like that are all good. We go back to our script editor. All the numbers are still the same because they've been on it. Hit execute. Another fence is laid down. See how this one's got the end here? So easiest way to work with that one is go here, duplicate it again because I want the fence to finish about here somewhere. Open up the transform group, get rid of the wires, just delete it away, get rid of the panel. There we go. Place is finished. Looks nice and straight. Pretty happy with that. This one, the fence runs on the inside in here. So, to get first things first, what we'll do is we'll collapse that so it's easy to work out. Placed objects, I'll highlight all of them. Put them away in fences. So you highlight the fences, you can see where they're all gone. So we've done a lot in that. So all I worked out with doing these trees, there I've got a bit more to go. I'll show you how I've done these ones so far. So this is all like trying to be more like a native scrub. All I've done with here is select a tree, uh, duplicate it, be random there. I use just stage two trees, so I have a pine, the, the pine, the birch, and what is the other one? Yeah. So basically I've used all the base game trees and everything. I've been trying to keep it all similar base game stuff to try and make it easy so I'm not having to make, well, one, I don't know how to make other trees, other textures or anything like that. So at the moment I've just been learning how to do everything. So what I've done with these ones, norm, what I've been doing is pretty much zooming out this. You go control B, you hold down your right left mouse button and you just push control and it drops them. So I'm just pretty much pointing them every, in random places. Control B again. Try to all random rotate. Oh, that one's not, you can see that one went up. So that's, you know, the collision's marked on that. So that's no good. So I'm gonna just bring it down there. Well, we got this one to go. Just to fill it all up, make it look like a scrub, like a non-cleared. Like so. And then I went into my train textures down here, came down uh, bush. State four is the, the bigger one, so that's the bigger plants here. I've only normally set it on and then my train button set the radius pretty good and just it creates that low format of scrub and that's how I've been creating these tree lines and trying to be making them sort of just kind of random but still like so it's semi-natural growing uh, put the grass back there ah. there you go so that's how it I've pretty much just rough marked everything because I've at the moment I've got it on uh, a, basically a sign here. So my sign pole 
at the moment that's in the bit so that's visibility is off so you can see it will turn on which I should be dropping the way but and that's my Google Earth image on my map so I can see where the tree lines and the roads are and I've just rough marked all the paddocks and all the fields and the tracks and stuff and then I'm just going around and slowly making them more accurate and lining them all up properly so so far that's what I mean pretty much this much up that is this tree line here was um is a planted one basically probably three years ago we cleared it out it is still on the google earth image but we've you know cleared all these trees and then all this field works into this one and that track's gone it all works at one big square field it's not many hectares but that's how we've worked it in now but i've left these little fields in here because i'm going to probably start with these three fields here as your first game being back to the original um, you know, that's the original farm that we got, first got so keeping those fields together and then these ones you can be purchased later on so you can upgrade but you start with the smaller equipment and then work up to the bigger stuff so you get a bit a very good experience in all of it so that's what I was working on here um, so far there is Judd you can tell by going back into my map there are some more other icons and everything around the sheds here so there's, there's another dam, a watering point right here. That's where I'm, that doesn't fit in there because I, like I said, I'm trying to use base game stuff. I need to learn how to make, I would like to make a new cow yard or something like that, but I just, I don't know how I'll go with it. So I was sort of having a trial of putting the base game cow yard, sheep yard, piggery, pig yard in there. These are just a location so I can get the position of them. So once I've got the position of the pig area, those numbers, I can go in there uh text editor and then load it in so when you start a game up they're automatically in there with all the proper working points and everything i've learned all that bit so i know how to do that but i'm just using if i use a base game stuff so no but not creating as much of a load issue on some computers and everything and also trying to hopefully one day get it on console if it all passes and everything like that but it's all just my effort trying to so i don't create too many errors but without doing too much out of my comfort zone so yeah i've place all the fences off so we just got this fence along here and then I'm done so I'll get my spline again I'll finish this last one so, oh we should just change start it's probably not going to work for me now over there that's where you got So this, this tree line is a native tree line which is basically pretty much that close to the road. It's just enough just to fit the big equipment through. We literally just knock the equipment on the trees through. But So I want to give enough room so you don't get collision marks or anything but it's still pretty close to be realistic. So uh, lift it up again. Need this one, when the fence goes in here then there's a track there so I should mark that with my rough dirt I'm using for my tracks four so I remember these numbers it makes it easy so if we put that into there like so and take the grass out so it looks fairly nice and what we have to do is if we worked on the fence to be here and do light it up with that one and then a bit of a gate that will look pretty good so put that there and then the fence can go that way actually don't want it on the end there So when you got it in the air, you can hit just page down, it brings it to the ground. But like I said, I, I want to keep it up so I can make sure it's not collision, any collision marks or anything on the trees. So I keep it out of the terrain. So we can just about bring that right over here. Judging by that. So far it's missing most of the trees. 
just this one on the edge here. So most of this is just marked off my memory. A little bit on the, that Google map image I've got on my page, but on the that sign, so I can have a look at it. But most of this is pretty much my memory. So we have been working these fields today. So today I literally just seeded canola today in this paddock. I sprayed it all and seeded it so all the weeds are dead and the canola's just been planted this morning. Just finished probably 20 minutes ago. So that field's done, so that's where most of this I was out there today having a look at it all. Right, pretty happy with that. Back to my script editor. Execute that. That didn't work because we didn't have the spine placement selected. It does come up with down the error and you con down the errors in the console shows you what it's not right. There we go. That's that there. Just for safety, save. <laughs> Don't understand that. <laughs> oh, that comes up good. Happy with that. So we just got to take away the terrain detail here because that's a bit close to the fence. No point having it under the fence. You can't seed it there. So I'd give it a go in real life. In the game, you get close and the collisions will stop you. So I've got it sort of rough. I haven't kind of set it ac accurate. I've put it pretty close, but it's just more of a bit of a more of a rough feel to give it a, actually in real a realistic feel, not a computer generated um, look. So it is fairly straight, but this is pretty much me making it rough. One, it's pretty quick doing it. And two, I can be more accurate or just make it look a bit more natural, I guess grass back along the edge there actually we do have grasses and weed growing along the edge under the fences and all this so it surprisingly for something which is mate you know textures and everything for Europe this is actually looking pretty good to Australian conditions yeah missing the red dirt but we're not purpose red here I've actually got a quite a change not black soil like this but we do have a good sand plane and everything which you're on so there's more clay sandy soil here so I know those textures are just non-existent in the game at the moment. So yes, I'm losing a bit in textures, but I make all the other rest of the details and everything are going to be there. So Should take that bit off. There you go. Uh, that weight doesn't need to be growing in there. So I'll put that there. Oh, wrong button again. Like so, it's coming along just nicely. Add a little bit more on the corner. There we go. So, that's that done. What we need to do is... Oh, my spline. All my objects are in here. Copy that, shift. Moved them up there, easy. Bang, I want that there. Which end of the post are we here? Duplicate that. Drag it along. The wire panel doesn't need to be there, nor does the wires. Done. There we go. looking pretty good to me. I should put these ones this way. So if we go duplicate it, try and oh, 
hit the wrong button again, didn't I? Ah, say we did all that wrong. Yep. Got to make sure you select the post, the whole transform group. It's a lot easier to set up. So we duplicate that. Now it's a bit easy to get right. These, the fences are actually pretty easy to place down because you don't have to be that accurate to get it. You just got to make them look reasonably straight. They seem to be pretty, pretty good up. Yeah, not like a road or anything. So using the placement and everything, so whatever object you want to place in there, so you can set it up to place roads, you can set it up to place trees. And you can have, even within your script editor here, you can set it a random scales and random angles. So you can have your rotations and everything random. So if we set our random rotation and random distance, um, you can place you know, random distance away from the spline. You can place it in diff different positions along. So it doesn't have to be object distance. It can be it. You know, random distance order. Okay, so, so if you put random distance between everything, it'll work. It's a bit strange why it says true. That probably should be negative, but anyway, it seems to work. So we got that right. So I'll just duplicate that again and drag it out. And look at that. Fenced off. The whole field's fenced now. So we just got, only got a couple more posts to put along in this end. See, they're the longer ones. Oh, duplicate that. Bring it down here. Look at that, that looks beautiful, nice and perfect. Could probably make all that into. So, if I put my grass texture back on, grass rough, put that into here somewhere. And then on my train detail, can. Make the field bigger. Look at that. Easy as. So far, that's you know where I've been going. That is actually pretty straight, so that's good. <laughs> you could probably spend a lot more effort in trying to get everything lined up. I would try to do that normally if you want more of a perfectionist and you like everything more square. But surprisingly, for you'd think I'm actually doing it quite rough, but it was how it was built. There was, most of this farm was eyeballed. Like there's not actually much accurate if you go and have I can bring out some pictures and it is roughly thrown together so you know, but I'm a fourth generation on this farm and I can tell my granddad and my dad weren't very accurate and can't see grand, granddad can't definitely tell you where north is not while looking at it so as long as it looked straight going down the road he was pretty happy with it so all these fences were there is a few zigzags and everything right at the last point and it actually comes up pretty good. Yeah. But so being in that angle, you can have a gate ang angled like that. It's not an issue. 
I'm leaving it like that. I'm thinking that's a good spot for it. Might just take a bit more of this grass off to make the track look a bit more, might make the track a little bit more wider just to get around the post a bit more. If we went grass rough and just put that like there. Take this edge off. Look at that. It's all just about trying to building the maps. All about trying to get it right. Just sitting here editing, putting it, laying things down. You could always undo it. I do little bits, and then if I really don't like it, just Control Z, go back, start again. It's not that difficult. Um, it is pretty much just adding things in like so and that has been pretty much so far what I've been up to so this is so far what I've done on the farm so I've done from the sheds down here to this corner here that's the detail all I've got is the rest to go <laughs> I marked it marked it all out I want to build another dam in here and like I've got in there at the watering points the tracks are pretty good so there's a tree line which I've got to make in here as well. But but that's pretty much the fences. I'm thinking of making basically the fences, the boundaries of the fields. But certain ones like these ones where they actually don't have fences in real life, I'm not going to put them there and let, let them so you guys can you know, open the fields up. So these little ones should be open up. Though that I'm sort of leaving that one there as is. I don't know. You can't... I've worked, tried in game. You can't delete these fences. They're all prefab now, so... But having a little field like this is all right. It'd be a good little grass field. If I learned how to do gates, I'd be putting gateways in here, but I don't know how to do that yet. So there's lots of learning involved yet to still come, but just at the moment giving it all a go and seeing where I'm all for. Uh, I'm pretty much happy with that so yeah it's all the scripts are pretty easy to use so if you want to do it just the big trick is now yep save it copy it over into the Giants and make, let's have a look at it so yeah save it we'll copy it over to my mod folder so copy it go into my mods which I shortcut it here add it on Try farming simulator out. Once it's updated, good quality steam. Oh, friends. Yeah, picture of the farm. I actually took this photo, so that is the picture of the farm. And I added the PDA at the moment just so I get a feel of where everything is in game, so I can have a look around at my GPS position. Well, basically, the um, Google Earth image, making sure that's all right. So, playing against the game. This is building the fences it's come up pretty good all these ones in this field I actually laid all out by hand just to try and get a gist of it and yeah that's why there's a corner post and everything oh you can edit them in later all these ones were done with the script so I've worked out using just the single post and everything it works a lot better looks a lot nicer with the script rather than putting the ones with the four posts at once they just it's just too far for the land even though this is a flat semi-flat area this is not best ah we left the spine viewable look at that probably came the wrong way for this uh, what are we going to do uh, 
บ่อยอยู่So I've set the store up just so I had able to purchase things. Um, this is going to be an Australian map. This is a map of my real farm, Adam Sands. Thanks for coming and having a look. So no, it's not a European map or anything like that. This is an Australian map. I'm you know from Western Australia, so and this is a map of my farm. So the the history behind it. Actually, this year will be our 90th year farming this farm. So, this is going to be a, it's pretty good. I thought we have 90 years celebrating and everything. It'd be a good thing to make it fit on farming simulator. For one, also then I could farm it in real life, then turn around and farm it on the game later on. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's... There we go. So that's pretty much what we made today. Hmm. Boing boing. So once you've finished laying all the fences out and everything, we can delete that spline. No, it's all right, mate. No, don't no, no be sorry about it. And obviously the fence is a collision, so we don't drive into them. But remember, this is the one we deleted the wire off. It's no collision there because we deleted it. So that's pretty much me editing it all. Adding all the farm in. So with that, once we're finished with it all, we can delete the spine, delete all those transform groups away so they're not here anymore. And then you don't have them showing up with that line in there. But even though with that, that line there, it's you know, pretty good, pretty nice and straight. And with that, the trees the way they are, they all pretty, looks fairly natural sort of scrub. It's sort of everywhere, everything's semi-rotated. And you bring all the bush underneath and it just builds it all up. And then I add some, there actually is some little random shrubs and stuff along the edge here and add some flowers. And the big line down the tree. This I'll rent, I placed straight all by myself. I actually, probably looking at it now, I could have used the spline method like we did with the fences and lay them, all these trees out perfectly like they were planted in, because they're planted out of a tree planted nice and straight in real life. So fence on that side. And the one on this side is... Yeah, well, I think actually think I got that right wrong. Pretty sure the fence is on this side of the trees, and that one's on the other side. Can't remember. What size is the map? This is a standard size map. It's your two pi two k map, like a standard giant's map. What I've actually done is because Australia is so big and everything like that, I actually took a four k uh, four kilometer by four kilometer image, Google Earth image, and DEM map image and then scaled it down to the 2 k two by 2 k map because I wasn't happy with the scaling of the fields so like this field here that looks that far is that's 51 hectares um, if we load it up in the game and got it all right they'll tell me this is like one hectare or half a hectare so it's not right and if I was to farm it it would take me about how long it does it in game and I want to you know if I did all this farm all day it, you know take all day to see this farm and that's about what it is in real life with two machines. So it takes about two days. So I've shrunk it all down a bit. So the, so the field sizes are big, but not too big. So that's what I've been working towards. So that's basically me building my map. Uh, I'm going to leave it there, guys. I've been here for 40 odd minutes. So all I can say is thanks for everyone coming out and a look out. It is live, it'll be uploaded to YouTube very shortly, so if you want to have a recap on all the everything that's done, thanks to everyone for watching it. Oh, thanks Lancey boy. Um, yeah, I'll do it. I don't know, I probably should add some gates later on, but yep, I will give you a shout later on if I need it. And obviously I'm on your Discord, so I'll be around to have a chat with all the help if you're happy to provide it. I'm, I accept anything pretty much. So far it's good, but thanks everyone for watching. This is the end. See you all guys later. Bye.